Hello everyone and welcome to the latest episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Today I'm delighted to be joined in conversation by the fabulous Wendy Sweet. Wendy lives in the hills on the beautiful west coast of County Mayo in Ireland. Alongside her husband Steve, they have created an oasis for nature and started their business Woo in the Willows. During this inspiring episode, we explored how a closer look at the ingredients list on the back of a skin cream and her own journey with cancer led Wendy to question what she was putting on her skin and ultimately the creation of their own beautiful range of natural botanical skin creams and products. Wendy openly shares both her passion and depth of knowledge about the healing properties of plants and herbs, from the diverse range of lavenders at the heart of Woo in the Willows homegrown botanicals to the powerhouse that comes in the form of the very familiar but humble little daisy. I learn how, inspired by Mary Reynolds' We Are the Ark, in just a short time they have helped nature begin to reclaim their patch and how every day we have the opportunity to learn and be amazed by the world around us and that by simply quietly taking our own journey we can unexpectedly inspire others which can lead to changes we simply couldn't have planned. Okay, well, welcome, Wendy, and thank you so much for joining us on today's episode of the Nurtured by Nature podcast. Um, I tend to just get started by asking people to share a little bit about their nature story and what nature perhaps means to you, how it's been a part of your life, and if that's evolved over time. Um, If you were, you know, you loved it from childhood, or maybe it's something you've discovered more recently. Okay. Right. Well, thank you for asking me on. Um, well, I was actually born in the countryside when there still was somewhere in the county of Essex um, many years ago. Um, so from a very early age, I grew up amongst nature. My mother was a keen gardener, though they originally moved from the city to, to Essex, but I was born in Essex. Um and for, so for 11 years, I had this idyllic childhood of playing with friends, playing in fields, bringing home half-dead mice that the cats have caught and trying to make <laughs> them better, uh, growing stuff, um, and saving all the, all the dump cats that used to be kind of unfortunately dumped at the farm, yeah. um, trying to make them unferal and rehome them. So straight from a very early age, as probably as far as I can remember, I've always had an interest in making potions and stuff. Even I'm surprised we didn't even kill the little lad next door, me and my, my friend, because we used to make him eat it all. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, mud pies and all sorts. So I've always had that inside me from a very early age. And then life changed for me for about age 11. And my mum moved to a more modern place, which was stuck in the middle of suburbia in a new town. So from the age of 11, probably till late 20s, I moved to Cornwall then. But in that time, I had really a little tiny garden of my mum and dad's. And I felt like a square plug in a round hole almost. I never fit Mm. into that setting, really. Yeah. Um, So I moved to Cornwall to become a little bit more rural, hopefully. But obviously, uh, again, you have the plans, but they don't come to fruition. Fruition. So um, I married a Cornish man, and then six, seven years ago now, we came to Ireland to see oh, a friend, wow. and we decided that we were going to sell our one-bedroom flat and move to Ireland. For twenty odd years, I was uh, running a gardening business in Cornwall, so oh, okay. living in a flat. But that's how I kept in with the, the oh, wow. outside work and the nature. Yeah. And I also had allotments, which I grew my own vegetables and stuff like that, um, volunteered at a dog's home, rescuing and stuff like that. So we, when we moved here, we was able to buy a ransacked house, I suppose. <laughs> it was been left for years on a just under two acre plot oh, wow. that oh, was been left for 10 yeah. years plus as well. 
well. So oh, it was wow. almost gone past its best, to be honest. It's only yeah. ever been used as grazing. So like most um, commercial farmers, they'll use commercial feeds and commercial fertilizers and yeah. spray yeah. killers. So we moved to the plot we are now and everything was kind of waist high in rushes out there and okay. nettles. Um, there was no worms in the soil. I've never had a garden where there's never been a worm in the soil wow. okay. um yeah. but the wildlife we had was hares which was oh, beautiful lovely. yeah and frogs so that was my starting point really we started just cutting and cutting and cutting to get the rushes weakened off a bit and cut yeah. uh digging ditches um all so, by hand both wow. of us to get the soil redrained again installing a pond for the frogs <laughs> uh, and to divert the, the spring we've got springs that naturally bubble up here so all that water was just leaching across the land so we contained it we built a pond up like dammed it almost yeah. and then the overflow of that goes back into the ditches which goes down into the sea um so the frogs have all got a safe haven now where they can spawn without getting washed away when it's heavy rain yeah. pour at the ditches um the hares still lay their leverets here I always oh, have at least four yeah. or five baby leverets born oh, on the land beautiful. every year. So I haven't ups disturbed them too much. And then we started planting trees uh, because obviously we're very open here. There's no shelter belt. So they're still quite young. It's still quite a, a young woodland. Some some are not very tall at, at all, really, to be honest. But that time will come and planted probably not short of 400 trees on the oh, land. Oh, wow. So, amazing. Gosh, some, goodness me. Yeah, some for <laughs> coppicing, some to feed the birds, some for shelter for them and us. Um, so the bird life uh, has all, also gone up here. So now we have blue tits nesting in old kettles that I've hung up in, in the trees, <laughs> oh, robins, um, a pheasant comes every day and gets fed. Crows were born on the land two years ago, so they hang around constantly. Oh. Uh, blackbirds, robins rains you know it, it, yeah. it's it's idyllic yeah yeah just um uh, coming back more into balance rather than just just yes, like you said yeah. one species the rush is particularly sort of predominating exactly. and now yeah, given a chance of, just because of the sod the sodden wet soil really and it wasn't draining anywhere and the rushes actually act like a sponge yeah. so they absorb all that water and they'll re even draw it all in even more and hold it on the land you know yeah yeah so yeah and this is all done without poison so you know i'm very proud of what we've done when we when i think about them i mean digging great big rocks out of the land and moving them on rollers with bars like the egyptians move the pyramids <laughs> around this is how me and my husband worked you know and wow. put new roof on the on the home and everything so i mean there's still lots to do but obviously covid came along and um, I kind of thought, you know, we need to kind of hopefully make this more sustainable for living as well. But, you know, I've got done the wild wildlife bit where the, where the, you know, and I can keep encouraging that. And I'm part of the ARC movement um, with the Mary oh, the, Reynolds yeah, thing as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah we've, um, uh, we talked, we touched on that um, with Laura Sweet yes, as well. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's how we sweet. met. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah, good yeah. Laura. Yeah, bless yeah. her. COVID came along, and basically, I was using some commercial uh, moisturizer. And because uh, we couldn't go anywhere because of the lockdown, yeah. I had to cut the bottle in half because I could feel there was still product in there and I couldn't get it out. Well, on the yeah. cutting the bottle down, when you've got time to actually stop and look what you're doing, yeah. The numbers on the back of this bottle was actually quite frightening of yeah. what I was putting on my skin, and, that, and it was portrayed as being really. You'd look at it. I've been using it for years thinking, oh, this is really nice. Yeah. And actually, it wasn't, you know? Yeah. So then we kind of thought, well, let's see how we can kind of all the knowledge of gardening and designing over the years and herbs. I've always had a big interest in herbs and herbal things. Try and put all this knowledge of herbs into a, into something. So wooing the willows was kind of started, really, to be honest. And yeah. uh, so now uh, I started off with... Uh, three kind of different um lavenders uh all the same angustifolia but three different varieties of it and about 15 plants and this year i've upped it to over 20 varieties of lavender oh, wow. and wow. nearly 400 plants oh, so amazing yeah um, yeah it's incredible isn't it because um i know a lot a lot of sort of the lay people shall we say would would just you say lavender and they just 
they don't realize there's such a huge diversity of of different species and but they all have Oh, slightly yeah. different um properties as well don't they Oh, if for you're sure. using Yeah, them in for sure. I mean, there's 45 different um, species of lavender wow and over okay 450 different varieties. wow So just to name a few, you've got like the spike lavenders, which are actually a lavadin, okay and they'd be the ones that um, like the grossos and the edelweiss, and they're the crosses between mostly the Portuguese lavender, which is the stocus, and the English lavender. But what happens with them is they, they have more camphor in the oil. Okay. So uh, you wouldn't be able to really use that if you was pregnant. Right. Um, it won't be do you too good, to be honest. Yeah. Uh, but it'd be it, um, obviously a uh, qualified masseur would know that, but she would use it on deep muscle pain, Yeah. Okay. Yeah. where the angustifolia oil is the one that's the gentler one, that's the one that goes into all our body products. So Yeah. I grow Okay. the grosso, but I turn that into... things to keep them off out the out the presses Okay. because Yeah. of the camphor. Yeah. And then I use the all the angustifolia, then either the edible ones or they go into oil or they go into distilled waters or dried and go back into the products as as uh salts and plates and stuff like that. So yeah, Oh, yeah, amazing. it's it's And yeah, it's, yeah. it is, I do find it fascinating because there's so much out there in the natural world, isn't there? And it, but you do need to know what you're doing as well. I think you've, you've touched Oh, yes, a little you bit on do that there need that, to do. Yes, yeah, yeah, just for because sure. it's natural doesn't mean it's necessarily safe and you need Absolutely, to, yeah. absolutely right. There's, I mean, I, I grow, I've got lots of different herbs growing in my garden from digitalis, you know, foxgloves. To, you, you have to know them. You can't just go out willy-nilly and go, that looks nice. I'll put that in to see what that does because obviously some of them are quite toxic. So, Yeah. you know, and even down to the lavenders, you, you need to know what, what your lavenders are. I've, I've studied for probably well over a year now and I've got probably eight or nine different lavender books and it actually I found the perfect lavender book this about two weeks ago uh, and it's one from Kew Gardens that they, Oh, okay. you know, Yep. so uh, I ordered that in and it, and it, it is just like the lavender Bible, you know, but all this knowledge, I don't use anything until I've researched and researched. I mean, I studied with the RHS many years ago, so I've got RHS books here. I don't rely on the computer to tell me. I will flick through a book Yeah. for hours Yeah. Yeah. and cross-reference that book with that book and Yeah. that book with that book, you know, Yeah. and Yes. they're all um, proper It's really official important. books. Yeah. It's It really is, important yeah. to, to make sure that you know how to identify everything and, Exactly. and yeah. I mean, there's been a, quite a few accidents, to be honest, with aloe veras and agaves, apparently on, on this amazing world of TikTok. Um, because a uh, young agave will look like aloe vera, Right. Okay. but it'll, it'll poison you. <laughs> it'll make Yeah. you quite ill, do you know? Yeah. Yeah. So you, you need to know your difference between them as well. Um, and obviously, that sometimes they get sold as well as the wrong thing as Yeah. well. So it's not everybody's fault either. You know, Yeah. it is sometimes the... the suppliers so I never really even trust what's on a label 100% I'll still Yeah. go home and research it myself And your years of experience as well, you'd, you'd notice as well if you'd be like, hang on, that's not quite... what I would expect yes it to look and touch, feel and exactly smell like. yeah Yeah. Yeah. yeah so we're we're at that position now where we we've got a copper steel so we actually distill all our own um, hydrosols now and obviously the byproducts of some of the like the rosemary or the lavender is the essential oil so the essential oil goes back into our products as well now so Oh, yeah wow. it's it's beautiful it's a beautiful process and, and yeah yeah Yeah, it's and I lovely think... um. Do you, I mean, I, I think when you, you get, look into these things, you become, you get more of a reverence for the plants as well, don't you? When you realize oh yeah like yeah all of the goodness and things that they can do, it's, yes it's, it's, yeah I mean I'm not a lab I mean I haven't got the room to be a lavender farmer like they do in Provence or I mean they've got acres and acres of it and yeah. when this when this journey with me um when I didn't have so many lavenders started I had to buy bags of lavender in and the color of the lavender was like chalk and cheese to the lavender that I grow because it's mass grown it's mass dried it's mass cut So it it kind of probably is maybe a six months to a year old, maybe even before Yeah. it gets to me, where my stuff Yeah. is still dried so gently 
yeah. and it's still so blue when it goes back into the products you know the dried stuff it's it's not got yeah. gray or any or anything it's just yeah so different yeah 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 but it's interesting when you touched on like looking at um your moisturizing products because um i actually sort of followed that a little bit of that journey myself um yeah. i don't make my own products like you i didn't take that step but um a few years ago i had problems with adrenal fatigue and thyroid oh, okay. issues yeah. and um, became very conscious of like all the toxins and and everything that was yes. in products and it it is quite frightening when you <laughs> you start to it look is. at labels yeah. and and even things that um sort of profess to be natural and they still have a huge a huge amount of things in it that doesn't really need to be there exactly um, exactly i mean I mean, obviously, when you're a big manufacturer, you need to, obviously, it's pumped through machines, so it can't be as thick. Um, so then they add water in to make it go further. And as soon as you mix like a shea butter and an oil with water, that's when the mold starts. Okay. So then you have to put in all the all the not so funky and, um, yeah. preservatives and stuff. To give it you know a shelf I mean? life as well. Because exactly. It's the Where mine process. is just pure product, you yeah. know um wow. so yeah yeah so yeah I'm very proud of what we've achieved really and I mean we've still got a long way to go we're still early stages really yeah. to be honest so um uh, what so what pro products have you got at the moment you you said you um we do uh three different kinds of body moisturizers which you can put on your face I'm just one of those people why do we have to complicate everything yeah. Why do we go to the supermarket and have 20 different varieties of toothpaste? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> when I know that they only need two. Yeah. <laughs> and most of them are the only two. They've just changed colour or whatever. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. So it's just to catch. So um, I do three body moisturisers, which is a rose oil based one, a lavender oil based one, and then there's a carrageen um, Irish moss, which is a seaweed based one. Oh, okay. Um, which is a which just gives it a little bit more oomph if you've got slightly older skin. Um, and that one is uh, also got our lavender oil in it and then a little bit of lime oil and a little bit of spearmint oil just to change okay. the, the, the the smell of it and make it yeah. feel a bit fresh like the seaweed smell, yeah. like a seaside. Um, we do bath salts. Most of it is lavender-based with rose. And then we do a, a seaweed, again, Irish seaweed-based one as well, which is um, serrated rack and, and dillisk in it um, with the lavender, lime and spearmint oil in that as yeah. well. We do foot soaks, uh, peppermint in and lavender oil and a mixture of peppermint and lavender dried and gorse or whims okay because yeah. that's an anti-inflammatory as well and it makes it look pretty with the yellow in yeah um yeah, yeah. beautiful uh, gorse is it, beautiful isn't it it, it? Yeah. it is yeah, yeah yeah and living in cornwall so long gorse is a big part of cornwall you know yeah. so when we used to travel back home when, years ago when we're going back home to cornwall driving down the a30 smell that coconut smell of the gorse you know yeah. so uh yeah um which i've got a gorse gorse bush here now so I can pick my own gorse here um we do soaps we do exfoliating soaps we do the moth prevention like the sachets or the wands made out of the nice. spike lavenders the lavadines we do uh shaving balms and shave oils midjoff oil which is necessary in the west of Ireland or most <laughs> parts of Ireland because you get fit and alive and is, um, um, is that all that's all natural as well is it that you that is all yeah. natural now I, I admit I do not grow grow the oil for that but we we do use a indigenous recipe that um, okay. um, came from america originally oh, wow. so it has got betty bearing and cedarwood oh. oil oh, and it does stop them getting bitten and i do a tick off spray and oh, that's quite um, useful yeah Very, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then bath melts and exfoliating uh, moisturizing and exfoliating body buttons which are done with poppy seeds and crushed rose petals and oils oh, in that wow. as well Oh, so yeah, we do quite a quite a yeah, quite a few wow. bits really. You... My, my mind's always going over of what next can we do? Do you know? Like, <laughs> I was you gonna, know, I was gonna yeah. say you dived you dived right in there, haven't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. 
and then obviously uh, during the summer, which is quite seasonal for us, like um, this summer, we started infusing all, well, I did the oils anyway, like cooking oils, because I do grow a lot of tarragon and sage and rosemary, obviously, and thymes. Um, so this year we started doing infused uh, cooking salts as well with Atlantic salts. So, oh, nice. yeah, but the oh. garden is always full of bees through the summer and oh. yeah, it, it's beautiful yeah. out there. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. I mean, that's the beautiful thing, isn't it? Is that, yes. you know, it's, it's good for us, but you're actually creating yeah. this beautiful environment as well. Exactly. <laughs> and we have worms. I'm so yeah. delighted. You know, we pl- every time now we plant a tree, instead of digging up a bit of rubbish that's been buried, we actually make a space and there's a worm there. You're like, oh, oh lift it out of the way, yeah. put the tree and put the worm back. Put the- <laughs> It's lovely to find someone who's excited about worms. I oh, I, I, <laughs> no, I am so excited about the worms, I tell you. And I had to actually get a teacup from a friend, believe it or not, from their compost bin to introduce to my compost bins because there was none on the land. And that's how I got my worms. And now they're spreading around all over the two acres by nearly six years later. We, so. I've got two horses and um, and they they live out all year round and we, we take the manure off the field and we have a big oh, lovely. manure I pile. I could do with some of that. And, um, <laughs> and it is, it's just like this worm metropolis. And, exactly, exactly. And, yeah, it is, and it's just, you just can't beat it, can you? And, and No, you cannot. No, yeah. no, it, it's amazing, really. I mean, to be honest, if I had a little bit more land, I'd probably have a Connemara or a couple of donkeys as well, just to help me yeah. in that process side yeah. as well do you know of of using the um the black gold as i call it there the yeah. but um, <laughs> what we what we we do now so in areas now um i basically where the land has been so bad i chop and drop as i call it so okay. we just chop and sometimes i'll just lay down loads and loads of brown cardboard and then i just dump uh grass clippings on top of it and chop that whatever i'm yeah. throwing away that i don't want in my compost just goes straight off and after a while, that land has started to build up. And now we've got trees taken in that area as well. So yeah. it just takes a long time for the, the bad stuff to leach out, about five years. And then obviously, because um, they've got a lot to contend with, because obviously it, there's stuff probably under there that we don't know about over the years, like they did in the UK. Old farmers used to bury stuff. Oh, in, yeah, they love, you know, they love, so they they love to, deal... to bury a bit of stuff, don't they? They, so they, have, they have to... <laughs> You know, so it has to deal with that. But I, I last summer, the, even the the trees are that they're they're taller than me, and I'm five foot two. So I was absolutely delighted in that. You know, they've come on where there was only like a foot foot high little sapling went in. Yeah. You know, yeah. And then all of a sudden, you're actually looking at them, going, "Oh, you're a bit taller now. That's yeah. nice. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. It's lovely. So. No, it's- it's something um I don't know you they're they almost like your children aren't they that you like you, you sort of oh yeah you know you get you almost do like that class count like in the spring yeah, right? exactly. have you got your yeah. leaves on yet yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then obviously yeah. the, the hairs like to go around and prune a few things off now and then as well do you know what I mean you're like oh no there goes another tree you're, you're just sitting there because they're so used to us they're not scared of us it's really yeah. bizarre so you'll go out and you'll go stop doing that now most hairs are just bolt bolt away yeah. the ones that are actually born on this land that see us nearly every day they just look at you and go you're talking to me yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then just carry on yeah <laughs> okay most of them reshoot again so you know the alders and the apple trees will reshoot after time again and the rowans so yeah mm-hmm. well that i guess that's the thing they've evolved together exactly. haven't they and and yeah, so yeah. yeah they whilst we might think oh my goodness no and exactly, actually yeah you know sometimes you you can help nature, but then you just have to let it be. And that's what we do. What we do basically in all what I would call the wild areas as such, we just mow a pathway, a single pathway around it all. So we can walk around it and just keep check. And then we just leave it to do its own thing mainly. Yeah. I mean, we had a, a heron in the wild pond the other day. I was like, oh, my God, look at that. That's the first time I've ever seen a heron up here, you know. So. Oh, wow. So yeah. he's, found, he's found you now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. I, yeah, I mean, it's only frogs in it because it is a wildlife pond. So, yeah, but, so, yeah he's obviously clocked the water because yeah. we are surrounded. We're in the hills of County Mayo. So it's a uh, sheep farming country we're yeah. in, you know, so which are also beautiful. But obviously my little bit here is is not about the sheep. It's about 
what would have been years, years, centuries ago, hopefully. So yeah. we're planting as many native trees as we can, mixed in with a few other ones, just as, uh, you know, a little bit more shelter belt. But, um, yeah, most of it's native planting. So Yeah, yeah. I think um, I watched a, a little uh, documentary recently about Scotland and about the salmon in the rivers there. And yeah. Like you, you kind of in the UK, you think of Scotland as like the, the true wilderness, don't you? And, yes, and I was yes, quite stunned no. by them saying that actually, like it should have been forested, like Alaska. Exactly, it's all man-made. Like, wow, you know. And I, kind of, <laughs> I know. You know, and it was, I know. and I sort of, you know, I suddenly had this vision of Alaska, and then I was like, oh wow, it's actually like seems almost barren, and, and yeah, it's, yeah. and it is, it's, it's our perception, isn't it? And like you say, like where you know where you are yes, you know you, yeah. with all the sheep it's it, I mean it, it should it should have have a more diverse landscape exactly than... I mean um if you walk up to the top of the hill where I live it's quite a, a high hill it's not far short of a mountain to be honest up the top of there is old bog wood coming out of the land up there you know where it used to all be forest yeah. years ago do you know yeah. um old oak it's mostly oak pine and you that you'll yeah. find up there in, yeah. in big old chunks you know and it's the most beautiful thing but it's rock hard wood you can hardly cut it you know but it, it yeah. does make beautiful sculptures some of it yeah yeah, yeah so, where it's yeah. been preserved in in the exactly yeah. Box. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so yeah. when I did start this kind of little little oasis I suppose in the middle of all this barrenness almost beautiful barrenness but you know yeah. it yeah. is very much like the highlands of scotland people like some of the purists of of uh the rewilding would say oh you should let it all come in naturally i said but there's nothing around for, for me yeah. to for it to come in all i've got yeah. is heather and kutch grass for yeah. miles <laughs> you know yeah like, there is nothing it has yeah. to be and, and like you said without the worms and things like you could yeah. you could be sitting there for decades and decades and decades exactly and, and i haven't yeah. got that long you know yeah. i'm 60 odd now nearly so <laughs> it, it's kind of like i'll do my own thing it's all right i know, I know what i'm doing i'll just carry on i just yeah. like, <laughs> yeah but you I, I think um it, there is a balance isn't there and and sometimes oh, yeah like yeah. nature does need that helping hand to give it that little kick start exactly. to get exactly get over exactly. that first sort of tipping yeah. point and then so it's got to be done I mean we've got stoats I mean they're amazing to watch we don't see them every every day but they're living out old stone walls and when you do see them to watch them move in and out weaving in and out you know they just look the most amazing creatures, you know. We don't have pets up here because obviously um, if I did have a, anything, it would be like a horse or a donkey, something that's a bit more organic. I can't have cats and dogs up here. I don't have chickens up here because obviously we do uh, forage a lot off our land and put it back in our products. So for yeah. health reasons, I, I had to stop friends yeah. even bringing their dogs up. I'm going, we can't, we can't have dogs up here anymore now. Yeah. This is what we're doing and dogs and Dogs and body products don't quite mix. No, no, <laughs> so, sad, sadly, no. Yeah, yeah. But if I yeah. if I need a dog fix, I'm more than welcome to go over to the farm and see these dogs. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And ruin them, as as my neighbour says. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a lovely place, and you know, you're you're kind of living alongside the wild side, and and it's hard to explain, really. It's the energy of the place. You know, I. It's just. I mean, we've got Bronze Age little tiny uh, encampments, circle of stones just out the back to us, and so there's been people living up here yeah. since time begun, probably. You know, since people came over this way, you know, and you kind of like God, the amount of people that must have walked this land before yeah. us, really, it's amazing. And then there's there's a sort of humbleness in that as well, in terms of like nature and everything, isn't there? Yes. Of like, yeah. you know, it's. Um, I often, I often sort of mention how like the more indigenous cultures sort of have this sense of responsibility about the natural world yes. whereas yeah. um our sort of more urbanized western view is often one of like we have the right because we own it but when you have that sense of like no people yeah. that have come before you you know there's going to exactly. be people after you and and animals exactly. and, and other things and you just yeah you have a different a view of your own um, life but also... I, I i feel that okay legally we own it but actually we don't own anything because 
we won't be taking any of it with us. Yeah. And we're just custodians of it while yeah. we're here. And if I can make it better than what it was when I arrived, I've, you don't you know, um, I saw corn crakes on on this land twice. Corn crakes are actually quite rare in Ireland yeah. now, yet they yeah. were actually a well-known species of bird at certain times of the year. And I, I was talking to my neighbour, who's, who's just a wee bit older than me, and he can remember hedgehogs being up here. No, we haven't got any hedgehogs yet. But I well, around the, worms, the place, they might exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I started building um, stacks of stuff so things can get in there. And there's like old, um, old, old pallets with logs put on, so there's room yeah. to get under. And I've stuffed it with leaves, you know. So it's all there, just waiting. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. that they'll come back one day. But we get dragonflies come out the pond now and everything. So that's lovely to see as well. The dragonflies emerging and damselflies and and it's amazing uh, in in such a short time really isn't it because you said you've been oh, there what yes. five or six years it'll be yeah we've been here just over five years on the on here um so uh in may it'll be six years yeah and kind of the pond went in the summer after so uh and it's like you say it's amazing because the first probably that summer we already noticed diving beetles have moved in they'd flown in mm -hmm. somehow yeah. Pond it's amazing. It's amazing how, yeah, yeah, you just, you, it's just incredible, isn't it? How, yeah. how nature yeah. seems to just find these places. You, you know, they, it's like they, they sent up a flare or a signal exactly. or something. Yeah, 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 hey yeah. guys, quick over here! Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oh, come this way! And of course, you know. So now I, I just laugh with my neighbour. I go, yeah, because he goes, "Have you seen the fox?" Because they're always worried about the fox we're lambing. And I go, "No." And he goes, "You wouldn't tell me, would you?" And I go, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> because he knows I wouldn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah no we're, we're a bit the same here we've got yeah. quite a strong farming community so yeah we we yeah. Uh, we keep a few things under our hat <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. no no not seen them at all <laughs> but... yeah so yeah I mean we live to be honest I'm lucky to have such good neighbors and we've, we've kind of slipped in really well considering obviously we we are come from Cornwall over to here um and because obviously we've we got to respect their lifestyle as well do you know so it's yeah. worked out really quite well to be honest yeah yeah it's, yeah uh, I think um that's important isn't it especially if you're sort of um in some respects a bit of a newcomer to somewhere yes, and, and you've yeah. got slightly different ideas and objectives and yeah, just finding yeah. a way to to do that in a way that's not yeah, confrontational Exactly, yeah, and that's the last thing. I mean, I could have stayed in Cornwall and, and be confrontational with people most of the day there, to be honest, but uh, here uh, we just kind of, we all help each other out if we need a hand and, uh, you know, um, and we're not averse to going to help if it's really cold and wet and wild out there, helping him feed the sheep, you know. It, yeah. it, we don't mind doing that with him and he'll pull something out with the tractor if we need it, you know, and... Yeah, it's all worked really well. I couldn't wish for a better neighbour, actually. That's what's out lovely, yeah. yeah. And we respect each other's differences, you know. Obviously, uh, the thing with the spraying and all that, that, now that in, I think that's all stopped in Ireland now, you know, so there'd be no more spraying. But actually, my, my neighbour actually stopped spraying the year after we moved in. So okay. this land has not been had any spray on it anywhere oh, wow. uh, over the last five years. That's so, incredible. Yeah, because once I proved to him that through cutting constantly, you don't need to use the spraying, and actually yeah. it's cheaper because spraying yeah, is a and, lot. Yeah, and that's well, especially now. Actually, um, I know over the last year, a lot, a, a lot of the inputs for, uh, sort of more co commercial farming have have oh. increased massively. So, yeah, if you can if you can show a more economically viable you know that these people are our business people as well aren't they so if exactly, you can yeah. you can present it in a way to them that's beneficial to them then they're not not open to no to exactly change. Yeah. no yeah. and it, i think he's, he's quite quite bemused by us sometimes you know what i mean he's like <laughs> what are you up to now you know what i mean you'll get nothing to grow here and then he's like all oh, them bushes are all doing well yeah, <laughs> so, yeah and, but saying, that's yeah. I mean that's an amazing achievement as well isn't it and I think yeah. something not to be underestimated is actually by taking you know taking it on and doing it yourself and and not putting you know not forcing it down other people's throat but no, allowing them no. to just 
observe and and see for themselves and exactly yeah and and I mean uh, incredible that you know not only have you you've got your two acres but actually your impact has been that the the farm next door has has stopped spraying themselves is because they can see they're like oh wow actually you're on the same land yeah they've all really got bad health issues the farmers around here because they're of that age you know they've been they've been using this stuff all their lives because that's all they've known you know and it and you're kind of like well it's I'm telling you it's that you know Uh, yeah it is it is really sad it's um yeah you know that they bless them of you know they were told it was completely safe and um, and why would they doubt that and yeah, um, yeah, yeah but yeah. a lot of time you know they didn't they didn't take well, you know the precautions and things either did they so it's no yeah. and and it's been part of farming in the UK and everywhere really because of the american corporate companies to be yeah. honest and you know it's from the from the war it's yeah. a, a leftover from the war so yeah, Sad yeah. But true. I think so. Um, I'm the one that still goes down and picks up all the seaweed after a storm and throws it all over me lad. And then he'll yeah. go to me. My grandfather used to do that, and I go, absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and that and that's the thing, isn't it? It's going. Is, yeah. You know, um, trying to like hang on to these threads of of what used yeah. to be done um, before, and um, yeah, I, I I I'm it's I actually started looking into all the the damage of. Um, sort of uh herbicides and and things because mm, i yeah. actually um one of my horses almost died um from toxic poisoning um yeah because failure. they sprayed sprayed all that with uh glyphosate or maybe yeah. just to make yeah. the hay go over quicker because yeah. we had a little bit of a problem here with it believe it or not because um not going into but we're on a dry toilet right so um we run out of some sawdust so the only thing we could get was chopped hay and we put it around some trees as a mulch yeah and we thought that tree don't look too good yeah and it was then we realized that the the hay had been sprayed with glycerate yeah. and we, I was like okay so we yeah. won't do that anymore it's, <laughs> and it's quite yeah. I mean that's the thing that's quite shocking when I started looking into it I was quite surprised um that how it you know you you initially think oh it's you know sprayed to keep the mm-hmm. weeds down and things but actually it's sprayed on quite a lot of crops just before they're harvested exactly to, as a and it's all in your and, bread and yeah. everything yeah. yeah yeah and it's the thing of not having the choice this is it's kept i know they have to um put things on bottles and packages but not most of us don't know what's what we're eating do you know what i mean and uh, that's what did it for me because obviously probably nine years ago now I did have ovarian cancer okay. so all of a sudden we've always ate pretty well because obviously I grew my own food yeah. um but obviously we are, I'm going to see but we're kind of aware what we're eating but look at this what I'm putting on the body and you know yeah. whatever you put on your skin 60 percent of that goes yeah. absorbs into your yeah. blood you yeah. know through the through the layers of the skin and and I said that's you know that's terrible and and even there's even some bigger companies that are, are not actually well known for being natural but they've sold their company out now and actually they're not but they've still yeah. it's got into the psyche of these of people going oh they're really good yeah you know and you're kind of like no they're not actually yeah <laughs> look yeah, at the e-numbers you know yeah, it's really <laughs> it is really hard it's a difficult difficult yeah. one to navigate yeah. because like you say um companies that you know maybe uh, we sort of grew up grew up with exactly. or they've been around for a long time that were yeah. um you know they have their yeah. brand is about ethical and and exactly and, and I mean, yeah yeah it is quite shocking you know but yeah you could we could, and i always say to people look i i don't tell anybody what they should or shouldn't do i'm not about that because i take offense if people tell me what yeah. i should be <laughs> yeah. doing do you know but as long as we can change a little bit and help, then all them little bits make one big bit somewhere along the line. So there's a, you, you know, it all joins up with somebody else doing a, a little bit and somebody else doing a little bit. And all those little bits actually make a big difference in the end. They might not seem to because it's not overnight, but they do, you know. So, yeah. you know. Yeah, no, I, I love that. That's something I really believe in as well. Is, yeah. You know, I think sometimes it can feel a bit overwhelming and we sort of feel yeah. like, 
Yeah. Oh, you know, unless we can save the world or change like millions yeah. of people, there's no and hope. We can't, but unfortunately, yeah. you know. <laughs> but I can, I can give air, uh, the wildlife a safe place here if they need, you know, to, yeah. you know, and and healthier stuff to nibble around, and and we can grow stuff, and you know, and it's kind of like, well, this is cool. I and mean, if I if I had the money and I had another maybe ten acres, that'd be perfect, but. <laughs> But then, I probably yeah, would. but your your um, what's the word? Your people are like resonated with you, and and they're attracted to that as well, aren't they? So it's like yeah, yeah. as you have the confidence, just do your little bit, and like you're not forcing yeah. other people, but they're no. coming to you and saying, "Oh, I've seen you've done this, and that worked quite well for you." And and yes, how yes. did you do that? Because I'd like to do that too. And exactly, yeah. and I'm more than happy. I mean, I did have a, quite a few people come up this summer to look at the lavenders or to look you know and then they'd look around the rest of the magical garden as they call it um <laughs> I'm like oh right yeah yeah of course you can come up and have a look you know and and I'm actually quite pleased that they they actually leave getting what we're doing yeah. where if you if if they don't actually come and see it they just kind of go well how does that work then I can't see how that can work because yeah. you know for example I bought a, li a lavender from here and it's dead <laughs> and you're kind of like okay <laughs> yeah, I know. yeah I it is um, that, yeah. I, I I I can empathize with that because I I've, I have found lavender is it, it can be a challenge to grow as well it, it seems to it, it, it yeah. can it, but you must buy the Angustifolia lavender the proper English lavender and forget all the other ones yeah I mean lavadins are okay but there's the stokers the ones with the little fluffy petals on oh, the yeah. top that most They'll shots look really sell. pretty <laughs> they do not like the winter so okay. unless you've got a greenhouse that you can lift them in uh, they're not going to do any good outside all year round so but the the English lavender will sit there in minus 15 and still yeah. survive if it needs to and trim it it has to be trimmed every year as well yeah but you, you have really to... have to brutalize it <laughs> See, okay and but you have to um that that's the thing, isn't it? It's it's if you've let it go too leggy, then it doesn't. Really... Then it gets woody, and then it yeah. splits. Yeah. So then you're damaging it. Then. So yeah. really, uh, basically, uh, I, I prune all mine into like a ball shape, a bit misshaped balls sometimes, yes. but they you know. <laughs> but I'll take it down. So it's probably got about an inch and a half of green left on top. Okay. Which seems drastic. You're like, oh my god, that's what yeah. most of the plant got. Not yeah. for me, because I'll dry that then. Yeah. That will all get dried on a great big rack in the shed, a separate, oh, and then that all goes back through into the sawdust that I use in my bathroom area. So that all oh. smells of lavender as well. Then oh, it all wow. goes through the compost. Then after two years, after it's all gone through the compost bins, all that compost goes out around all the forestry trees or the woodland trees. Yeah. So that they get fed as well. So, yeah, there's a big yeah. process in life all the time. There's no um, quick cut. <laughs> no, 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 there isn't. And I, I like that, that you, um, you know, composting and things is, is also a, a great, great thing for people to do as well. Obviously, provided yes. they've got a little bit of space to do it. Um, yes. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you don't need loads of, even two bins is enough. If you've got the tiniest garden, you, you, you can be composting your vegetable waste that you buy to eat, your salad stuff, your coffee, your newspapers, as long as it's not glossy. There's tons of stuff, you know. Um, when I'm building up beds here, all I do is get loads and loads of brown paper boxes, cartons, with all the sellotape taken off, obviously, lay them flat. Then I start piling up and piling up and a bit of dirt and a piling up. And then all of a sudden I've got a raised bed that I can plant stuff that gives their roots out of the wet wetland underneath yeah, yeah. so they're sitting a foot higher already that gives them a good start before they get in down into the yeah you know and that's yeah. all I do with stuff really it's, yeah sometimes people have come up and it's just like loads of cardboard with dirt all over it <laughs> <laughs> and a, a, a load of grass cuttings thrown on top of that and they're like looking at me and I go I'm building the land up there <laughs> yeah but it, I mean that's I think and it's like um... a mulch yeah, I was going to say we we do have this little bit of a, an obsession with like neat and tidy, don't we? And actually, yes, yeah. nature isn't neat and tidy, and sometimes we need to no. let go of that neat and tidy yeah. because actually it benefits it, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, when we first moved here, I noticed that the uh, council were, were vacuuming them up in, the, in our local town was vacuuming up all the all the big tree leaves, 
from obviously to stop people slipping on them. It's a health yeah. and safety thing. Yeah. There was bags and bags of them. So I said to them, what do you mind doing? if I take some of these home? Yeah. <laughs> and they're looking at me like I've gone mental, you know. And yeah. I threw them all round round the trees, you know, as yeah. mulch. Yeah. You know, and that's what I did for about three years. Every winter, I'd fill the van up with loads of trees, wow. tree leaves, and bring them back and throw them all around the land. Yeah, but now yeah. there's now there's enough trees um that to they're... be dropping themselves. Yeah, yeah. I was yeah. gonna say they've got their own leaves and they can get going a little bit. And, and it's not yeah. getting so blown away because everything used to just blow away because not there was nothing there to to kind of stop keep it stop in the place. Wind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So in areas I actually walk now and there's actually tree leaf mulch and I get so excited. I go, oh, my God, look, we've got mulch, tree leaves. <laughs> oh, amazing. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, yeah no, a, it, it, I, just, I think that's the thing is when you start on this journey, you've got to be prepared for you're suddenly going to get excited about things like worms and exactly, <laughs> mulch. Exactly, and, yeah, yeah, and bees. Every time I see a different bee or something, I, if, if there's an insect or something I don't know, then I'll go and go through all the books yeah till I find it you know go, what's that I've not seen that before so yeah and so it makes every day almost like a, 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 an adventure of learning as well because there's no way I mean I do know a lot of things in respect of because you're working with them every day almost but every now and then I go I can't remember the name of that I'm gonna have to go and find that because obviously you can only store so much knowledge as well do you know it's uh... and, um, but it's lovely isn't it when you've got your own little patch like that as well and something that you yeah. might have seen somewhere else but you've never seen it on your patch and then it's exactly. the first time and then you're like oh is yeah. it just a one-off or am I going to see it again and yeah exactly exactly I mean we had we had shrikes come up here which is a beautiful little bird oh, never wow. seen one before in my yeah. life so now I know that shrikes are actually carnivorous in the respect of they're actually pick up a bee or pick up something and they'll stab yeah. it on a hawthorn, spike yeah. it through, yeah. you know, or a bit of barbed wire. And I'm kind yeah. of like, oh. And I'm kind of like, well, I don't want it really eating my bees. So I'm kind of <laughs> like, what do I do about this strike? But I just leave it. It, it. It's all part of nature. But then equally, you know? it's, it's yeah. a testament to the fact that you've obviously got enough insects and bees to attract it now yeah. as well. And so, the butterflies, yeah. you know, yeah. it, it's wonderful. I mean, some some butterflies actually cocoon under our bathroom. Oh, wow. um because the bathroom's raised up so somehow they get underneath it and yeah. they actually hang on the bottom of underneath the bathroom floor in wow. the cavity and wow. you're like wow that's amazing so my bathroom is actually like a big butterfly house oh <laughs> underneath. that's incredible <laughs> oh amazing so, yeah it is beautiful yeah, yeah. and you it, it's just you know every day it just makes me smile you know when you wake up and you see blue tits waiting waiting for their foot like because I do feed up I give them wild seed and stuff to help them at the moment and stuff like that yeah. but you know and the robin and you know the pheasant comes every day and for waiting for food and you've got the hares out there it, it's it's kind of like what why couldn't you just you can't help but smile at it like no. just look at it it's no, beautiful it's, it is yeah. lovely. I mean we put a bit of food out but we do notice as well that um they they tend to a lot of the birds they they're quite sort of seasonal and if there is yes. like wild food they will that's their preference and we might exactly. see them and then actually when times are really tough they'll come and they'll be like yeah we we need a little bit yeah. of a helping hand at the moment exactly um, yeah. yeah yeah I mean I, I'm not obsessive about it I don't hang peanuts out or any of that business they just get wild food scattered seed yeah. a little cup of it thrown out around the area over there and then the the top the top one like if we have, um, for example, melted cheese like camembert that I've had for lunch yeah. today, that that skin then will go out to the crows tomorrow, yeah. yeah. And they love it, Do you know. Yeah, we, they're, we, um... they're, they're actually <laughs> burying it all. So I might even have camembert cheese trees appear <laughs> one day. <laughs> Oh my my uh, my husband would love that. He'd, if you if you can get a camembert tree, <laughs> yeah, you'd, you'd be onto a winner there. I think you might become a millionaire. <laughs> but it's just so funny watching them, just all kind of, you know, burying it, and then the crows are watching them where they're burying it. So then they're going and robbing it, and you're kind of like. <laughs> bit chaotic out there at the moment <laughs> yeah no there i we've we get a lot of um rooks and and crows and jackdaws here as well yeah. and um we love it in the springtime because they sort of they seem to come and use our garden as a bit of a like crèche for all the the yeah. youngsters so they're like 
dump them there. <laughs> There's a exactly. bit of food to keep them in safe space. <laughs> yeah. A bit like our leverets, yeah. Yeah. But the the the, the mama mama rare come down and she'll lay them, do you know, and every and you'll you go, oh, there's a newborn leopard there because it's so tiny. I mean, they're minute. And then yeah. you just watch this thing grow up into like becoming this gang. All of a sudden it's hopping around like a rabbit, like a little bunny hop. And then yeah. it'll grow into this little gangly hair legs. So it's like this teenager form of a hair, do you mm-hmm. know? And uh, then all of a sudden it, it kind of, you see it going over the wall and you go, oh, okay, then you left home. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And then it will come back every now and then. And then obviously another Maybe the year after, she, it'll come back and have babies as well if it's a yeah. female. You know, yeah. it's kind of generations of them. But when we actually first moved here, we had a, a little leveret that lived on the. Um, it, it appeared the same week we moved in, and it only had half an ear, oh, one okay. side. Yeah. So it's quite and distinctive. Got, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I, I just called it Scarpa every day we spoke to it, and it wasn't scared to us at all it, it in fact it actually brought a whole family back believe it or not one day there oh. was like a mummy air and little baby leverets all out there and I'm kind of like okay he's brought the whole family this time um oh. but honest to god if it had seen if it sees me walking up the lane it had actually run towards me oh lovely and then it yeah. will stop and remem- remember it's a hair and then yeah. it'll take off <laughs> yeah. but unfortunately I haven't seen it for two years so I do oh. deeply miss that one but yeah yeah, yeah it's uh but I have yeah, all these generations of his hairs. Yeah, you know? <laughs> yeah, it's hard, isn't it? I mean, bless yeah. them, they don't go on forever, but um, no, they're no. special while they're around, aren't they? And uh, oh, they do. Yeah. And and I, I even like we've had a couple of stoats that have actually been fighting other stoats, maybe, or there is odd mink around. Unfortunately, so it could have even been the mink that took the stoat out. But um, if I find something dead on the land, then it has to have a proper burial. <laughs> You know, well, oh, it so is, it is, I'm it's, say, um, we need to bury this robin or we need to bury this yeah. stoat. <laughs> but it is, it's it, it's a, just a reverence for life, isn't it? It and, is, yeah. 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 And, yeah. And it's not, you know, there's no species divide, is there? It's, it's no, just... we're, well, it, for me, we are all the same. We're not, we might all look different, but actually we're, we're all animals on this planet. There's, yeah. there's, you know, and, and I think, unfortunately, Sometimes humankind, like you said, lifts itself above it so much it disconnects from it. And we are all part of the chain, unfortunately. Yeah. 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 yeah oh, cool. well, that was, that's beautiful, Wendy. I think that's sort of getting to a point that's a lovely place to wrap up. Is there, um, is there anything else that you, you think you'd like to, to share at all? Anything on, on your heart that's, uh, I think as for, people go like even say that they've got a balcony it doesn't matter what size you're growing anything in just grow it and enjoy the process do you know and mother nature never fails to either shock you or surprise you in in, the, in a good way do you know yeah. but never take it for granted you know and it, it's a journey and even yeah. if you just have a little flower pot of corn flowers it's a start even if they're just yeah. daisies you know yeah. The yeah. humble daisy yeah. you know yeah they're well, all here to help one, I, I think one of your um creams is made from daisies isn't it it is yes, yes yeah. for sure yes yeah. and it's a beautiful humble little bella perennis and you know it's got all the properties of arnica oh, but unfortunately wow. again when arnica come over the, the daisy the, got forgotten the daisy got for, for, for forgotten yeah but oh. she's a little kinder yeah <laughs> so oh wow um, and, and it's everywhere as well isn't it it's it like, is it's and, one of and those... it's just so good you know yeah. if you've got a toothache if you buy it on a daisy it will help take the pain away oh, until wow. you get to the till you get to the, yeah. the dentist oh, you know but the cream I make it's it's been people come back to me I make it for bumps and bruises and aches and pains you know um but people come back to me and they're kind of like oh it's really good on sunburn or it's really good on scalds or it's really killed my scarring up after my operation and oh, wow. you know I've been using it on my knee before my knee, knee replacement and the doctor's amazed that my knee's still working so much and you're kind of like wow and mums are going I've yeah. been using it on my new baby's bottom because there's no essential oil so it's yeah, safe for yeah. children because it's a soothing one I didn't want to risk anybody um and you know and you're kind of like oh thank you for telling me and then you've got other elderly ladies going oh it's helping my restless legs and I go oh, oh thank you very much 
so this little pot of wonder so every time yeah. I go out and see a daisy I'm kind of like oh you little charmer <laughs> yeah you know no, oh it, that's this amazing beautiful little thing yeah oh yeah I'm gonna yeah I'm gonna have to go and look up look up about daisies now I hadn't yes realized anything about that so well that's the old name for it used to be called bruise wart ah uh, okay yeah so yeah yeah and oh. it's obviously became daisy and day's eye because obviously it it opens up with the sun yeah but it's actually a, one of the wild flowers that have actually a, grow all year round yeah you might yeah, not see you do so many of them in the winter but you do see yeah an odd one blooming still yeah 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 they're amazing and and they're so resilient as well aren't they I think that's they are. yeah 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 um they're one of the the one things that tends to hang on in our like you know over exactly tidy gardens and lawns and stuff the little... and you can eat them you can put them in your salad and you'll get oh. lots of goodness from them so oh, yeah incredible yeah. oh that's yeah. perfect oh I'm I love a keen that forager yeah as well I love going out cook you know like cuckoo flowers, cuckoo schmuck. I'll, I'll, so I'll, I won't i will over forage out there. I'll take a few because I'm also very aware that the orange tip butterfly needs that to lay its eggs on. Yeah. So I'll take a few and then I go, no, no more now. It's all yeah. butterflies, you know. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And that's, that's important. I mean, um, I, I also do a little bit of foraging and it is very important to just have that awareness of, just taking a little bit making sure you exactly. you leave plenty for for other other species and, and nature exactly and, yeah. absolutely yeah and if we all learn to to share and not over gouge on stuff then there's plenty yeah. for everybody i think even yeah. the wildlife yeah oh well brilliant well thank you <laughs> thank so you. much wendy it's thank been you, an absolute Fiona. pleasure to learn thank more you. about you and and woo in the willows as well thank and, you very um, much yeah yeah definitely off to go and learn a bit more about our humble daisy i think yeah so, please do because yeah. she's a beautiful little thing so tiny <laughs> and it um, offers so much yeah. <laughs> brilliant. okay thank, thank you thank you wendy speak to you again soon yeah please. bye-bye Thank you so much for listening to the Nurtured by Nature podcast. I truly hope this conversation has brought some hope and inspiration into your life. I would love to have these messages ripple out across the world. So if you can, please share this episode with your friends, leave a review on your favourite podcast player and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. I would love to hear from you, so please feel free to connect with me on the links provided in the podcast description. But most importantly, thank you so much for being a part of this journey with me. But don't forget to simply get out there and enjoy the natural world.